In this episode of Control Issues, we'll be taking a look at a recipe that shows you how to build this phone controlled rover. Um, it is fairly cheap, it's very extensible, and it's a neat little project. To get started, let's first take a look at the items you'll need to make a project like this. First, you're going to need some sort of robot chassis. Um, in this case, I have a junior runt rover. Any of our runt rover chassis will be great for this. Um, next, let's take a look at the electronics. First, we have an Arduino Pro Mini. And as you may notice, this does not have a USB port on it. So to program it, we're going to need an FTDI breakout board. Next, to connect wirelessly to our phones, I'm using an HC05 uh, Bluetooth adapter here. The nice thing about that is that it is cheap and widely available. It is only compatible with Android. If you have an Apple phone, you might want to go for the HC10, which will work just as well with this project. Finally, to drive the motors, we have a TB6612 FNG motor controller. And this particular motor controller would actually work great with any of our Runt Rovers. It can handle more than enough current for this kind of project. And of course, we'll need to power our project. And in this case, we're using some AA batteries in a AA battery tray uh, that we recently started carrying, which outputs uh, 9 volts to this 9 volt uh, battery connector up here. Um, this is going to be a, a great battery tray for Arduino projects. It's right in the butter zone for the voltage range. And in this case, I have bolted a magnet to it. And I have also bolted a magnet to the inside of the chassis uh, using a, a belt mount nonetheless, which actually works great for mounting that little magnet. And this gives me a really slick and easy way to just snap that battery cartridge to the inside of the robot. Next, let's take a look at one of the most exciting parts about this project, I think, and that is the ease with which you can create the mobile app that you use to control your project. To make this happen, we're using RemoteXY.com, which is a free tool. And if we take a look at the site, you can see that I've already logged in and I've gone to create a project. In this particular case, you can see I'm only using the joystick controller. Um, but there are various other control elements we could choose from, as well as indication elements, would be, which would be useful if you're wanting to read data from your project and see that data on your phone. Uh, one of the neat things about this joystick uh, control element is that it has a gravity switch. So when you're controlling your robot, you can flip this little uh, switch over and control your robot by tilting your phone. So, as you've noticed in the middle column, we have uh, basically a representation, a visual representation of what our app will look like when we're running it. And in the right column, we have our properties. So we have the configuration for the overall app itself. And one of the really neat things about RemoteXY.com is that it abstracts a lot of the communication protocol stuff you would otherwise have to deal with to make a project like this uh, work. And so Right now we're using Bluetooth, but we could also use Wi-Fi or go over the cloud or over the Ethernet. We can choose various other microcontrollers. We're going to stick with the Arduino Pro Mini because I have uh, several of them on hand and I love how compact they are. And as I mentioned before, you could use the HM10, but we're sticking with the HC05. HC06 would work as well. And we'll be using the Arduino IDE for our integrated development environment. You can also change the settings for the different control elements by clicking on them and going to the right column. So you can see that the variable name for this control element is going to be joystick. And that's actually going to be the preface since this will be outputting at the X and Y coordinates. And finally, under module interface, uh, we're going to be using hardware serial for our connection interface, serial pins 0 and 1 for our serial port, and 9600 for our baud speed. Once you've set up your user interface the way you want, you can click on Get Source Code. This will give you the source code to drop into your Arduino sketch. This is not your entire project. This is basically a means to get the data from your phone into your Arduino project, or depending on what elements you're using, push data back up to the phone. 
So you will need to download and install the Remote XY library in your Arduino uh, IDE for your project to be able to pull and use the code from. And then you just copy and paste this code to get your project started. In the Arduino IDE, you can see that I have that code and then I've built out the rest of the app, uh, the rest of the sketch from there. So in that example code they give you, you can see the exact variable names that you'll be having to work with. So taking a look at the rest of the code, I'm setting up a bunch of variables that's used for the motor controller. Within the setup function, I'm calling remote xy underscore init to initialize the remote xy library. And I'm setting up my pins that I'll be using for the project. Finally, I'm setting the remote xy joystick underscore x and joystick underscore y to zero to begin with. At the beginning of each loop, we're going to call remote xy handler to update the variables to the latest uh, version of what they should be. And we're grabbing the joystick X and Y coordinates and saving it into an integer array to use later on. Next, we'll be mixing those coordinates. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with mixing uh, or you're curious about what we're actually, actually doing here, we made a whole other video uh, where we just delve into mixing. Um, so I would refer you to that video to learn about that further. For this particular motor controller, we need to set the left and right uh, channel directions. So we're setting that here. And then we're mapping the throttle to the motor controller range. So that motor controller wants a range from 0 to 255. Um, after we mix, we have values from 0 to 200. Um, and so we're just mapping 0 to 200 to that 0 to 255 range. And then finally, we're using a constraint just in case. I always like to use constraint to make sure that the value is gonna be within the range that's acceptable for a motor controller. Finally, um, and we've talked about this in the mixing video as well, but um, I like to have the robot go back into the right when you pull back into the right on the joystick. So when the, the value of the Y axis on the joystick drops below halfway when it's below zero. We're just swapping the left and right channels here. And then we're calling the move function to tell the motor controller to uh, send power to the different channels. So we're calling it once for each channel, telling it what direction and how much power to send. So this move function is included in this code as well. I have some notes here as to what the different pins are, um, but basically we're taking the motor controller out of standby, uh, making sure that it's not in standby, and then we're determining what pins uh, we need to call high and low to set the direction, and then we're sending the power onto the motor based on which motor uh, has been sent in the variables here. And while we're not using it, I do have a stop function, uh, just as an example, uh, which is doing nothing more than putting the motor controller back into standby mode. So that was a fairly brief overview of the code and of remotexy.com. Uh, we will have an instructable to go with this video as always. Um, so look for that link in the video description. Um, so next, after you've loaded the code onto your Arduino, uh, you need to connect your electronic components together. There will be a wiring diagram in the uh, Instructable as well. You could use um, a perf board to put that all together, or you could use a solderless breadboard with a bunch of jumper wires. In this case, um, I've had a board made at Oshpark just to make it a very clean and simple setup so that I could take and reuse these components in other projects and easily pr plug them in here again when I want to. So in my case, it's going to be a very simple operation of simply plugging these three components in. After I've loaded the code onto the board and now we're ready to go. Let's give it some power and go through the setup process on the phone. Once you connect power, you'll see a flashing red light um, that indicates that it's looking for a Bluetooth device to pair to. So on my Android device, I've installed the free Remote XY app. 
But first I'm going to need to pair the Bluetooth device. So this will vary depending a little bit on what uh, version of Android you have. But I'm looking at the various Bluetooth devices my phone can see. I can see the HC05. I'm going to select that. And as the note indicates, the pin is going to either be 0000 or 0 or 1234 rather. Um, and in this case, I know that it's 1234. So I'm going to do that. And I'm now paired to the Bluetooth device. You can see that it is connected. And I'm going to go into the Remote XY app now. And as you can see, there are no projects here when you first go into it. I'm going to click the plus button. Tell it that I'm looking for a Bluetooth device, and that'll show up underneath there. It'll show the different Bluetooth devices that you have paired to. And now I am looking at the app that we just set up moments ago uh, within their web app. So now that I'm paired to my device and everything's connected, the code is loaded, everything's ready to go, I can start driving it around. So one of the most exciting things about this particular recipe to me is that it's Arduino based and it makes it easy for you to develop your own app, so to speak, and get data uh, in a two way manner. So you could connect servos, you could connect more motors, you can connect sensors, you could read the data from those sensors into your app here. So this is really kind of just a bootstrap project. This is just um, a place to get started and then you could build out more complex and cooler projects from here. Thanks for watching and as usual, if you have questions, send us an email to tech at servocity.com.